mid journey has officially started a new era for AI images and nobody in the creative world can deny this. They have recently launched version 5.2 which includes a lot of crazy features that are very important for us to learn. Here is what people are creating with mid journey 5.2. It is incredible to see the kind of results and optimizations that prompt engineers are doing with this. So in this tutorial, I will go through everything that is new in Mid Journey version 5.2, some very cool keywords and techniques that you can use to get amazing results and free resources that can help you become a better prompt engineer on Mid Journey. So sit back and enjoy this entire tutorial because there's a lot to learn. Before you move ahead, I want to tell you about our latest learning website, howtoprom.in, where you can get free AI resources, roadmaps, and step-by-step -step guides that will teach you everything that you need to know about tools like ChatGPT and Midjourney. In fact, you can also know about my offline masterclasses, AI courses, eBooks, and communities, all in one place. Visit howtoprom.in to start learning and upskilling yourself. You will find all the relevant resources and the link to download the PDF in description. If you're here for the first time, make sure you click on subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you never miss an update. Alright, so let's get started. The entire Mid Journey v5.2 tutorial is split into three modules. In module 1, I will just quickly summarize all the major updates that are there in version 5.2. This includes your zoom in, your pan in and some small small things. I'm not going to go into the details of how you can install Mid Journey because we have already covered that in this video. This video right here will give you a step by step tutorial on how you can install Mid Journey in your own computer. This is a paid tool. I think it costs around 1800 rupees per month. The plan that I am using right now is costing me 1800 rupees per month. Then I will show you some very cool techniques and some keywords that you can use to get amazing results inside Mid Journey. So I really wanted to share these resources. I really wanted to share these techniques because they will help you create outstanding results. And then at the very end, some free resources that can help you become a better prompt engineer on Mid Journey. So let's cover all the major updates in version 5.2. If you were to go to Discord and just type slash settings, a menu will pop up and that menu basically helps you switch in between different mid journey modes so they have recently launched mid journey 5.2 if you want to switch back to an older version you can do that from here they have introduced three new stylized methods and by default they would only be on medium stylized so stylized basically means that mid journey will try to take more risks right and be more creative if you select stylize high then all of your images will be very very creative and if you go stylize very very high then you will find some very obstruse elements but the output will become very very unique then you also have a remix mode which basically helps you alter your prompts we won't cover that today and then you also have turbo mode and fast mode as well so by default you will be on the fast mode but if you switch on turbo mode you will get your images faster but it will exhaust your monthly credits faster as well so you will run out of your credits and you have limited credits in a month so now let me show you the changes if i were to prompt a minimal mansion ice sculpture an entire structure made up of frozen ice and ar 16 is to 9 i would get these four images now, if I were to upscale any of these images, once I get my upscale results, at the very bottom, you have these new options. You have very strong, you have very subtle, then you have three different options to zoom. You also have an option to create a square image. And then you have these four icons, which are for panning. Panning basically means that the camera will move in a specific direction. It can go left, right, top and bottom. Now, of course, you can easily imagine what they would do. If I were to prompt two warriors fighting on the surface of moon AR 16 is to 9, I would get these images. And if I were to upscale any one of them, this is the result that I would get. Now you can have variations of this image, right? So earlier, remember you had V1, V2, V3, V4 right here, right? You can now have more variations of an upscale version. And within that, you can have either a very strong variation or a very subtle variation. Now that's pretty simple to understand that if I were to use subtle variations, if this is my original image, this would be the subtle variation where 
where you can see that mostly the structure remains the same, their costumes remain the same, the landscape remains the same, but there are some details that they have shifted. But if I were to choose a strong variation that you would often see new elements being introduced, right? Maybe their weapons start to look different. Maybe their outfits also look different. The landscape also changes. In this case, they have actually added more details on the moon. More clouds are there. Even they have like a cloak and everything. So there are a lot of things that you will find different in your strong variation. Whereas in the subtle variation, you will have something which is, you know, very approximate to the image that you got in the first attempt. Now, if you click on zoom out by 2x or 1x or custom zoom, what it basically does is that it would zoom out the camera from the image itself without changing anything in the center. So if this was my original image, if I were to do zoom out by 2x, this is the result that I would get. So you can see that the central part of the image remains the same while mid journey has reimagined how it would look outside this frame. And the fun part is that you can do this till infinity, literally till infinity. And if you don't want zoom 2 or 1.5x, if you click on custom zoom on this button right here, if you were to click on custom zoom, you would get this pop up that would allow you to add in your specific input field. So you can actually use the same prompt and say that instead of zoom 2, I want something which is 1.75, right? And you can keep running this infinity because this was the result that I got at zoom 2x. And then I ran zoom 2x again on top of it. And you can see how it has seamlessly added more details, right? And on Twitter, a lot of people are doing these crazy things where they are creating a lot of 2x, 2x images, and then they're putting them in runway ML. And there's this thing called interpolation. So they're animating, zooming out by infinity and just it just becomes like a very interesting thing to see, right? But not that practical. I mean, there's no use case for it, but yeah, very exciting to see how mid journey is adding these more layers on the boundaries, right? And all of it looks so seamless. Now you can also pan in all four directions. So let's just say that if I were to prompt a tiger wearing a science fiction Iron Man suit, close up Canon EOS, this is the image that I would get by default. Now I have clicked all of these icons one by one just to show you the results, right? So if I click on say pan left, this is the result that I would get. So the camera would essentially go slightly to the left side and give more area right here, right? So it again gave me four images. Now I have also shown how it would look by pan up. In this case, the image got slightly messed up in these cases, but this one right here did it very, very well. And if I were to do pan down again, it would create an image that would show more of the suit, which is very interesting because it has achieved this result very, very seamlessly. So yeah, basic features. I'm not saying that these are groundbreaking features and this will help you do some crazy stuff, but yeah, just interesting to see how mid journey has evolved. Now 5.2 has also introduced the shorten command, which basically means that if you were to type slash shorten and put in your prompt, mid journey will actually tell you how you can get almost similar results in a shorter prompt as well. And this is very interesting for prompt engineers because once you give a very big prompt, for example, this was the original prompt that I gave, right? And it was a very, very detailed prompt. I gave it into slash shorten and mid journey created five different short prompts for me. Now, if you were to click on the show details button, it will actually tell you the words that have received the maximum weightage. So this will actually tell you what is more important to mid journey. It will give you a very close look into how mid journey prioritizes certain words. And that is why if you were to look at the very short prompt, you would realize that studio where drones would almost give you a very, very similar result, right? So we won't go into the details of this because this is a completely different topic altogether. But if you really want to become a good prompt engineer on a tool like mid journey, then shorten will tell you how mid journey thinks. There's also slash describe that we have discussed in our previous videos where you can put in an image inside mid journey. So you go to mid journey type slash describe and upload any image and then mid journey will tell you the prompt that it has read from that image. So you can see that how mid journey will read that specific image as well, right? Now there are some very cool keywords that I would want you to experiment with. And if you make something cool out of it, make sure you put up a story on Instagram or on LinkedIn and tag me. I would love to see what you come up with. Now this right here is a mega mega list of rendering engines that you can use inside mid journey. I won't demo all of them. You should actually try them out one by one because they're very, very cool. But just to give you a quick example, if I were to write dog running on the surface of Mars, this is the default image that it would create. If I were to add just one extra word, Pixar along with 16K, I would get a very cute dog render and it almost feels like it's a scene out of a Pixar movie. In fact, if I were to write a giant octopus playing drums on the beach, which is very, very random, I would get this. But if I were to write 16K vector graphics, I would actually get a very, very cool vector artwork. Now, a lot of illustrators would be like, how do we edit this? Turns out you can. You can convert this JPEG into an editable vector file. So you can convert your JPEG and PNG bitmaps to SVG vectors, and then you can edit them in a tool like Adobe Illustrator. 
straight up so it's very very cool how you can start from this point pick certain elements that you feel are relevant to your illustration and then use them in your work now there are some very very cool keywords that i found interesting one was psychedelic art right so if you add psychedelic art to any of your images you will find some very poppy colors and a lot of cool visuals on your overall image if you add kawaii art style when i use kawaii art style i often end up with results that are very like good looking very aesthetic very uniform and you know not very realistic uh, they have slightly a very unrealistic look to them but sometimes that is the aesthetic that you're planning to have i also love brutalist movement if you're planning to have some very cool architectural shots or some very cool photographic shots where you need a little bit of grunge a little bit of seriousness then brutalist movement would be very very cool in fact i have also been experimenting with ice sculpture so i would pick any random object and just add ice sculpture and then frozen ice if you add these two keywords you will get some very very cool results right so the fun part about mid journey is that you can combine these very very weird items together and come up with some very very cool ideas and covers which would get somebody's attention very very quickly right like i really like made of lego and toy material so if you were to run the same tiger prompt again it would create these close up shots of lego stuff right so you pick any object in the world and add made up of lego toy material and you would be so so shocked to see the kind of results that you get right in fact you can always have action figure so if you have any cool superhero even if you have your own avatar you can do a face swap and on top of the face swap you can run a describe then after you run describe you take that prompt put it back into mid journey and then just add this word action figure now i know a lot of you people would be wondering what did ansh just say but folks who have been watching my videos would know what i'm talking about so yes action figure and made of lego is actually very very interesting in fact you can also simulate specific camera models right so these are four camera models that i feel give really really good results so if i were to write a simple prompt cinematic still of a woman sipping coffee in a static cafe these are the kind of images that i would get right now just by adding one single camera prompt canon eos or maybe red monstro look at the quality of the results look at the lighting the fineness the smoothness at which mid journey is creating these renders right so when i use the red cameras the colors pop out it is way more smoother the entire image looks so so fine right it looks so high quality right and just by adding these cameras the quality of your results can just go 10x right so you can use these cameras as well because i have been trying and testing a lot of these and these ones give me some very very good results right and i will be publishing this entire pdf for free on google drive and pasting the link in description so you can always make notes on top of these right now some very very cool resources that you can use to improve your ai art abilities i personally feel that if you are a creative individual these videos and these playlists would really really help you starting out if you still haven't seen our playlist on ai tools please make sure you finish at least the basics because these foundations will really really help you get a kick start so i don't want to go into depths of it because i've already mentioned this playlist again and again next there is one person called david barona and he has been creating some very very valuable content on mid journey he regularly uploads these carousals on linkedin i would personally recommend you to check him out very few people are doing work that is as detailed and as powerful as his there's also this website called midjourney dot com slash showcase. Ah, uh, so the image has got blurred out, but basically this is a place where you can find other mid journey creators, show off their work. Right? There's also mid library dot io. I will put the link in description. But basically, this is a huge website of different different genres and art movements. Right? And I know that a lot of people are ah uh, very anxious and worried about mid journey copying their work. And to be honest, I also don't know the correct answer for this. My job right now is to educate people about the possibilities. Eventually, all of these come. Companies will find a common ground, right? Adobe Firefly is doing a very good job at this because Adobe Firefly owns the images that they're training their data sets on. So I'm pretty sure that very soon, even in a tool like Adobe Firefly, you will be able to fine tune these small, small things. It's all about practicing. right but in case you still want to go into the details of how mid journey works even mid journey has its own documentation right and there if you click on explore prompting you will be able to learn all the basics very very easily now we've been uploading some very very detailed content on both chat gpt and mid journey and a lot of other ai tools as well in fact there's a new field of design coming in it's called spatial design i would strongly recommend you folks to check out videos on spatial design because in january or february product managers product designers and front end 
end developers who understand spatial design will have a lot of leverage in the job market. So you will find all the links in description. If you have any specific topic that you want me to cover, make sure you put it in the comment section. So we will make sure that we cover that in the next set of videos. You can always connect with me on Instagram on at the rate anshmela.ai. We have created a broadcast channel where I regularly reveal what I am reading, what I am learning, some behind the scenes. So a lot of cool stuff is there on our broadcast channels as well. Make sure you click on subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you never miss an update. I hope that you're taking care of your mind and body. This is your dost Anshmela signing out. If you like this video, make sure you click on like and hit the subscribe button. I regularly upload videos on UX design, marketing and storytelling.